so it looks like D cannons are looking pretty lethal. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking more Eldar leaks. The latest ones to be posted up on the internet are for the Night Spinner and the support weapons. Again, leaked data sheets from this playtester codex seemingly coming out in dribs and drabs. Today it seems we're talking Eldar artillery. The support weapons have been an oddly popular choice in Eldar lists over the last couple of years. Some people are running mass vibro cannons to make some pretty effective use of that expert crafter's trait, the one that allows you to reroll one hit and wound. Night spinners have also been popular as well, a fairly decent amount of Ignore's line of sight shooting, and perhaps surprisingly general purpose for an AP0 weapon, helped out a lot by its 2 damage and extra AP on 6s. Both are pretty interesting to see the new incarnations of, so let's take a look at their data sheets. We'll start with the support weapons and the mighty D cannon, and move on to the artillery support of the night spinner, which gives us a fun look at the new Eldar vehicle support systems. First up, we have the support weapons which are pretty much the definition of a heavy support choice, and similar to previously, you can take squads of 1-3 to three models, but now unlike previously, and kind of similar to the Orc mech guns, they don't separate out into individual units, you still retain a squad of 3 of them. It was that separating out ability that made them a real pain to deal with, and also allowed you to spam multiple uses of the expert crafters trait, so I'd argue that, that is probably a nerf. They're pretty much the same cost as they were before, between 45 and 70 before, and now between 45 and 65, it depends on which weapon you take. Statline wise, their movement 6 inches, weapon skill and ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 3, toughness 5, 5 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 10, and a 4 plus save. Again, pretty much the exact same as previously. Their keywords also remain unchanged, they still have artillery, and they're still vehicles. On to the interesting bit though, which is the actual profile of the weapons. The Shadow Weaver now appears to be the cheap one at 45 points and it gives you d6 shots at strength 6, ap-2, and damage 1. It ignores line of sight, and much like the Night Spinner, no longer gets any extra ap on 6s anymore. Overall, really not too dissimilar to what it did before. The extra ap that isn't on 6s will certainly help out against any medium armour infantry, maybe things like Tau Fire Warriors in particular will be great prey for it, and also it has dropped 5 points from what it was before, so it has become a more efficient option than previously. A unit of 3 of them for 135 points should be quite a menace to light infantry. I believe they kill on average around about 5 Tau Fire Warriors, or do around 3 wounds to Space Marines. Not the highest damage output, but it's got a value all of its own when you can fire it out of line of sight. The Vibro Cannon now is no longer the cheapest option, it used to be 45 points, now it's 55, but it gets a whole ton more shots on its base profile, going from heavy D3 to heavy D6, still at the same strength 7, AP-1 and damage 2 at base. Previously, the more Vibro Cannons that targeted one unit, they'd all get extra AP and bonuses to wounds. Now that one has slightly altered it would seem. Their stacking effect only affects non-fly units, and you can't stack the Vibro effect from multiple different units of these. It has to be within the same unit, so likely if you're taking Vibro Cannons, you'd be taking a unit of three. If you happen to target the same unit with two Vibro Cannons at once, then the attack shots auto hit. That really seems pretty decent at that range, an average of 7 auto hitting strength 7 AP-1 damage 2 hits, and then as a bonus, again provided you're not targeting fly units, if you fire with all 3 at one target, they also get plus 1 to wound, still certainly look like they're going to be hampered by their low AP, but just for some rough damage output, 3 vibro cannons for 165 points should kill around about 9 guardsmen, 4 or 5 space marines with 2 wounds, or do around 7 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. That really is going to drop off really quite quickly though, if one of the support weapon dies, losing that big plus one to wound won't be very pleasant. Finally, most expensively, and probably most scary of all of them, is the D-Cannon, everyone's favourite Eldar distort weapon that opens a portal right into the warp to rip apart whatever it fires. These used to be 70 points, so they have gone down a bit, and they remain a short range barrage weapon, only 24 inches, but truly fearsome if you get within that range, D3 shots at strength 12, AP minus 4, and now a huge D6 plus 2 damage. It's just going to be a weapon that's going to make it massively intimidating to move troops closer to your lines, and like the other D weapons, a wound roll of 6 also generates one mortal wound as well. Considering these things do have the potential to be staying safe out of line of sight, and just bombarding anything that gets in range, that stat line is just incredibly threatening. Say if you had a big unit of 3 D cannons lurking somewhere, if they manage to get range on a toughness 7 or 8 vehicle, then on average you do something like 15 wounds to them. They're even quite a good source for command rerolls as well, rerolling any failed wounds or low damage rolls. 
With D3 shots and blast, they also have the potential to be decently effective against big squads of heavy infantry as well. I have a feeling that the D cannons could be a popular choice. Overall, I think they all look interesting. The Shadow Weavers look very cheap, and it's great to have ignored line of sight firepower at that kind of cost. The Vibro Cannons do look quite nice in general purpose, but I think that they're not going to get taken quite as much. At only AP-1 and damage 2, I just don't think that they're a great meta pick at the moment. So many things just aren't really going to care too much about the AP, and also a lot of things have minus 1 damage as well, which I don't think is going to help them. Losing 1 to get a big damage debuff really isn't the best thing either. Finally, the D Cannon looks like an excellent area denial tool. If enemies come within the 24 inch range, they're going to be in a, for a whole world of hurt. Finally, let's move on to the Night Spinner datasheet, including the new vehicle upgrades table for the craft worlds. It seems that in general, the actual Night Spinner tank doesn't really seem to have changed all that much. It's slightly increased in points cost from 135 to 140, and has all the keywords that you'd expect without really any surprises. It's a fly vehicle with the craft worlds keyword, and like the support weapons, it also isn't core. The stat line doesn't appear to have changed from what it was before. A decent movement of 16 inches, weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 6, toughness 7, 12 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8 and a 3 plus save. Again, like the support weapons, it does have the strands of fate rule built in. Maybe it could be good for a key saving throw if you get hit by something that's AP-3 and very high damage. But I'm not sure if this one's the biggest value one for things like hit or wound rolls. The main event is that Doom Weaver, a 48 inch barrage weapon with heavy 2d6 shots, strength 7, AP-2 and damage 2. Again it does appear to have traded out the extra AP on 6s for the flat AP-2 at base. With average rolling and not taking into account for any other buffs such as craft world attributes, that's going to be 2 dead 2 wound marines, 4 dead guardsmen or around 3 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. Not enormous damage perhaps but fairly general purpose and not too bad for a really long range artillery tank with great movement. Compared with Shadow Weavers, it appears to be a little bit better against marines and vehicles, a fair bit worse against one wound infantry. Again, no real massive surprises on the underslung weapons. The Shuriken catapults have been upgraded to the new profile with longer range and a bit of AP, and extra AP on sixes. The Shuriken cannon costs 5 points more and trades out those 4 shots for only 3, but at longer range and better strength and damage. Finally, and perhaps most interestingly of all, is the vehicle upgrade table. Each one of these costs 10 points, and have all been fairly switched up on what they did before. The Spirit Stones were previously probably the best one, giving you a 6 plus feel no pain type save. They seemed very usable on things like the Eldar planes, but now instead of that they count as double wounds for the vehicle damage table instead. At 10 points, I don't think that's going to be worth it very much for most of the standard Eldar battle tanks. Maybe if there's anything that works out to be particularly punishing too degrading. The crystal targeting matrix is kind of interesting, it allows you to ignore all modifiers to the hit roll. Maybe it could be fun if anything winds up having assault weapons. Certainly would help out against quite a few armies and dense cover. But again, I'm just not really sure that's worth 10 points rather than putting it towards another tank. The star engines give you plus 3 inches to movement, this thing's movement is already great at 16 inches. Again, maybe better if something had absolutely massive direct firepower and you needed to absolutely zoom it around the battlefield to get line of sight. And finally, and I think by far the most interesting one perhaps, is the Vectored Engines. This allows your Eldar battle tanks to get battle focus for a single turn. You activate it in one command phase, and then it means that they're basically able to move, shoot, move. Again, on the Night Spinner itself, I'm really not particularly overwhelmed. Jump, shoot, jumping isn't really that big a deal on this thing, as it can stay hidden anyway. But those Vectored Engines look like they could be super annoying on something like Falcons or Fire Prisms if they wind up being very efficient. I could see you maybe poking the edge of a battle tank just around the edge of line of sight blocking terrain, firing your guns and then retreating to safety, netting you potentially an all important turn of being able to shoot the enemy but not being shot yourself. It definitely comes with a price tag at 10 points, but if your opponent has some serious anti-tank firepower then that will be 10 points well spent if it saves the tank. Overall I still think that the night spinner looks very interesting indeed. Like with the support weapons, ignores line of sight firepower is really good to have in the army. I feel like with a fair few flavours available in the Craft World Codex, at least some of it is going to make it into competitive lists. I feel like it's going to fit quite well with the Eldar fighting style that they're going to have, with all of their jump shoot jump shenanigans from battle focus, potentially giving the enemy very little to shoot indeed, while the Eldar can still shoot them. So anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. How do you find the heavy guns of the Eldar versus other races' artillery? If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular Eldar videos coming. I feel like we'll be seeing plenty more of the Codex, both from Games Workshop and from Leaks. 
and I will of course review the codex in full once it's out. Finally, if you have been enjoying the channel quite a bit, I would just like to mention the Auspex Tactics Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below. Making all these videos does take a fair amount of time, and if you are enjoying regularly, then any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.